last update for this week. Uh, I've done, I don't know, about four or five of them so far this week. So it's been a very active week, as you know. Um, here is Litecoin. I added more to my Litecoin when it dropped under uh, the 160 level down here. So um, it again went to 157 and 156 and change, whatever. Um, it, so this is a buy and you know what I'm looking at. Uh, this was the original area where I was buying and it touched just under it again with this current decline. And I want to show you um, also XRP, same thing. Went back to the, the line over here. So if you didn't have a chance to buy the first time, you had a chance to buy the second time. All right. And the whole idea is the same as what I was stating before. And we'll go to Bitcoin then to take a look at this. But these are the, the altcoins that I like. This and Ethereum as well. Boom. Right to the blue line. Right. Look at that right there. Just under 2200. Um, this time I did buy some Ethereum, but not that much. So it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, I already owed a decent amount, so I'm not really um, super impressed with that. XRP is the one that I now own a good amount of, and uh, I am more looking for larger upside as we go forward uh, into the future for the rest of the year. Uh, also, I bought more Bitcoin. Um, not that much. I, I've moved money into from my other accounts into the crypto space, like I said I would, and I'm still in the process of moving even more money um, in case we get further pullbacks, which is possible. But let's go over the scenarios because I, I did bring that up yesterday, and I want to point that out. Um, there, between the 80% range, 88.6 actually, and the um, 61.8 percent of this first drop then the spike up to like that 42k almost 43 right um was what i was looking for as a pullback scenario one this is the first scenario this is just the retracement scenario before we go back up to this level up here based off of this pattern that we're seeing right there right so you know what i'm looking as far as that goes that's one possibility there's also Scenario number two, and let me get that. I have to get the picture of it because I didn't draw it as on the chart. As you can see, scenario number two, two that I came up with um, is this one right here. And um, this is where we get up, we break back down, then we break back up and then fail somewhere around the 37, 38 area and then break down to lower numbers before going finally back upwards. And this is a, another scenario that could happen. That's a, the second one. This one's a slightly lower probability, um, but uh, who knows? We'll, we'll see. So those are your two scenarios. This is the one that we're currently in. And this one's, you know, pretty much and doing close to what, you know, we would want it to. Now all you have to do is it'll start to really get steam if it breaks this yellow trend line right here. These from these tops right here where it failed before. But you see how it, it retraces 61 point two thirds of the range or more from the initial uh, low to high. That's basically it. Um, this is an X to A trade. Uh, uh, similar to it it has some differentiation but all of these patterns do there's like hundreds of variations um, and of volume and uh, price action dynamics in the the geometry of the price and the timing as well uh, so the energy of which this moves and so forth there's those three key pieces they they kind of fit within a, a, a puzzle and they come together to give you a, a mold, I guess you can say. And the calculations that combine together to give you this uh, don't always represent themselves visually. Sometimes they're more uh, identifiable in, in the volume and the numbers and the, the way the price moves as far as um, uh, the timing of it goes. 
that. But that's way too complicated, and you're not going to be really interested in that. What you should be interested in is it's following the, the overall design of right here. So if we get a break above this yellow line, continuation upward, and then we'll look for that target up here. Um, that's what I'm focused on. But markets, you know, uh, they like to throw in curveballs. So we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'm not going to try to predict beyond this. But you know my game plan. You know what I'm thinking. Um, and I kind of want to just hold the rest of the year. I, I don't know. I think I'm going to become fat and lazy and just, uh, um, you know, become a hodler. Uh, but we'll see. I, I'm not going to say something might develop. You know, there might be a pattern of which uh, it goes above here and then it becomes a sell pattern. I start selling and then buying back on a retracement and then trading. Uh, when the markets become active, I become active because I, uh, I trade according to what the market tells me. You know, and the past several months have been kind of inactive um, since like what? February, right? February, March, that whole area. I had the GMEs and the XRP and, you know, I was doing really great and then it, all of a sudden it's like slows down, right? So um, this might be speeding up again, you know, again, asymmetrical. We don't get to choose. We don't get to choose, but uh, I, I'm happy in one sense that um, my projections have all worked out. We got the drop all the way down to around 30k we hit the numbers and that's it I mean from here you know I can hold into the summer and uh, winter time and just wait for the the move upward um, you know this is a, a likely this is as a short-term trader this is what you want right here if you were just looking for the the short-term trade you'd want to sell whatever you bought down here up above here and you're done as a trade that's all you would do now if you're a hodler you know I don't have to show you yeah I do I do have to show you then you're gonna be looking for this all the way up here <laughs> so this is my main target and I don't care how long it takes it's it that's where it's going to go ultimately and right now it's still early in the summer we're still in May we still have June and July so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of curveballs the market likes to throw. Um, you know, it, it uh, is never exact. You can never exactly, it, it, uh, it kind of like uh, harmonizes, but it doesn't give you an exact match. The same song, it doesn't play it twice. It goes over and plays a similar song uh, in trading often is what happens. Or it comes up with a new song, but of a similar uh, type so if you're listening to jazz, it's going to still be playing jazz because that's what you're listening to. But it's just a new song or a different song in of jazz. So that's what we're basically looking at here, and uh, we'll see what happens. But that's basically it. So you know, I, I've added to my positions. We'll take one more look. We can see went right back down to the buy level uh, that I posted in the room. So you had a second chance to enter. Um, anybody who didn't, well, that's your problem. Uh, I put in the numbers. I don't, uh, I don't tell the market where to go or what to do, and you know I don't make excuses. Um, but we can see Litecoin right down and under the 57. Um, XRP right down and under the 85, 84 area. And what else did we have? Ethereum right under the 2200 area. Right, boom, there you go. So you had opportunities. You can see where it found support right there. And we'll see what it does from here. Maybe it'll go lower, maybe it won't. Um, one thing I did do is I did exit the rest of my BNB. So I'm not short that anymore. That's a big one I have to update you guys on. Um, I think that there's a good chance it can go all the way back up to the 510 area up to here uh, before it finds resistance. It has a one a double bottom like pattern, uh, really a one, two, three, but whatever. And it has this one here, one, two, three. So and it's 61.8 or greater and finds a match down here with these sticks. So I did exit this one and 
So now I'm completely out of the BNB short. So we can change that. Exit 100%. Um, and the reason I exited this is simply uh, it, it's no longer a what I would call a good trade. Um, it, it's likely to go all the way back to here, so I just wanted to take my profits. I could use the money for other things, maybe a buying of a further drop. So um, there you go. And what else? So silver is just looking boring. Um, you know my my ideas on silver. I don't care about anything until it gets above the mid 30s and even higher, up to maybe 48, 50s, up to this area up here, longer term. But the main target would still be in the 30 range up here. So nothing to do. Um, all right, I don't want this video to be too long. Uh, I did get a question asked about this Bidou, Bidou, whatever it is. Uh, again, it broke out here. So, you know, this is kind of like a, one of those out there plays. I wouldn't put much money on it. Um, but if it does go, I'm looking for it to get above seven cents and above. So uh, buying anything from under this blue line of, uh, under this yellow line all the way down here is in my opinion a good trade uh, it will be longer term and I'd be looking for numbers that go all the way back above uh, seven cents and so forth but again <clears throat> this is one of those riskier small little teeny coins the teeny tiny coins can't put much money on it because uh, no um, there's not enough volume uh, but if you like trading trades like that this, there you go. I, I think uh, from what I heard and what I, I can see in the price action from even their minuscule little price action they have, uh, I like the trade of it uh, breaking out in the future and getting above this area up here and then going ultimately doubling and, and who knows, who knows what craziness will uh, come from that. But there you go. That's that out, out there play. And um, Alrighty, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll talk to you next time.